Amen, I got a new life. So good to have you with us as we worship God. Uh, join in with us as we, as we give God praise and we give God glory. Amen. Amen. Let's go.
so good. So good, so good, so good. So good, so good. So good. So good, God. You are so good. Father, you are so good. And good, good, Father. His goodness and his mercy so good. You are so good, Lord. God, you are so good. You are so good, Lord. So good. Father, you are so good. Sing that again. I will exalt you.
and I will exalt you. Oh, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, I will exalt you. Oh, you.
wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I could do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am So I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now Jaira, you are enough Jaira, you are enough And I will be content Shira, you are enough It's forever enough, always enough It's more than enough It's forever enough, always enough It's more than enough I don't want to forget how I feel right now On the mountain tops Oh, I can see so clear what it's all about So stay by my side when the sun goes down I don't want to forget how I feel right now Sing Jaira You are Sing Jaira You've spoken. I'm already loved more than I can imagine. And I
right now what an amazing song we've just been singing with the words that we've been declaring Jaira you are enough come on he always has been he is today and he will be forever always enough for us come on more than enough for whatever circumstance you're facing for whatever situation you find yourself in right now our God is enough he's more than enough he's more than able to make a way. He's more than able to provide for you right now. Come on, we serve a God who is so great. We serve a God who is so big. Come on, let's just worship Him right now. God, we worship You, Lord. We love You, Lord. We pour out our heart of gratitude, Lord, of worship, of awe and wonder for who You are, Lord God. You are amazing, Lord. Oh, we worship and adore You, Lord Jesus. You're more than enough for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your amazing love for us, Lord God. That is more than enough. Your love for each individual, Lord God, will always be enough, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we just rest in that right now, God. We just soak in that right now, Lord God, in your amazing love for us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And church, this morning, we're going to pray together. We're going to kick off seven days of prayer. We're going to pray for something different each day. And um, we're just going to start that off right now, today, praying for the church, praying for the church of God. Come on, why don't you just lift your voice wherever you are and just begin to pray with me as, as we pray for the church, for the body of Christ. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Almighty God. Lord, we just come before you right now as your church, as your people. Lord, and we lift up the church of God before you right now. Lord, we thank you for choosing to move, Lord, through this instrument, through this vehicle to bring your kingdom. Lord, to see your kingdom extended and advanced on this earth, Lord God. Lord, and we lift up your church. We lift up the body of Christ before you right now. Oh God, that your glory, Lord, your glory would fall upon your church, Lord God. That the world would see, that the world would know that you are God, that you are alive, Lord. That you are the hope for the world, that you are the answer, Lord, to every problem, Lord God. Lord, we pray for a courage and a boldness over your church today, Lord God. That they would not cower back in fear, Lord God. That they would not hide. Lord, but they would display and reflect Your glory. Lord, in Your kingdom, they would demonstrate. We would demonstrate that here on this earth, Lord God. Thank You for boldness to arise, Lord God. Thank You for the love of God to be displayed and to flow through Your church, Lord God. We pray for the church here in our nation, Lord God. Lord, represented by churches and individuals right across this land, Lord God, we lift them up even as they gather right now. God, we pray your blessing right now, God. We pray your glory to fall, your presence to be felt and experienced. We pray for healings to break out, Lord, in services right across this nation right now, God, that the power of God would move, that the power of the Holy Spirit would flow, Father God, in every household, in every building, Lord God, in every heart, in every life, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, come, mighty God. Oh, come, Lord. I pray for unity in your church, Lord God. A unity like never before, Father God. Denominations binding together, Father God, to see your kingdom come, Lord. That we would stand on the rock of Jesus Christ, Lord God. That that would unite us, Father God. 
Lord, your death, your burial, your resurrection life, Father God, bringing hope for all, Lord Jesus. Lord, that we would stand on that. We would preach the gospel, Lord, that people would be saved. Our nation would be saved, Father God. Thank you for pastors, Lord God, right across our nation today. God, we lift them up before you as they lead churches, Father. Lord, anoint them, Father. Bless them. Strengthen them in this time, God. Lord, comfort them even in this time, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would be their source of strength, Father God. And the life, Father God, and your spirit would flow through them as they preach your word today. Lord, I thank you for such a power and anointing over them. As they preach your word, it will accomplish what it's set out to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel like we need to give him a shout of praise in this place. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Holy oh, praise, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God, we pray. Have your way in our nation, in your church, we pray. Hallelujah. Jesus' mighty name. Come on, we all said, Amen. 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 God bless you, church. Welcome back, church, to our Sunday service online. Here are this week's notices. For all you kids, Planet Changes has been churning out some new content just for you. This includes videos and quizzes that you can check out anytime you like. Your parents should have received a link with everything you need, so if you haven't already, make sure to check it out. If you haven't heard, church gatherings are available. We're gathering in groups of 25 in 10 different locations. This gives us an opportunity to worship a little bit closer as a family and enjoy the Word together. If you'd like to join a gathering, contact us and we'll find one suitable for you. And for those who are interested, Equip A is on tonight, 6 p.m. down here at church. If you're new on your walk or you want to get refreshed on the basics of knowing God, Come on down for some great teaching and equipping with Pastor Stephen. Fix Youth is back again this Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. This week is Focus Night, and you know what that means. Awesome praise and worship, and then straight into your connect groups. Bring your praise pants, some snacks for my connect group, and we'll see you there. As you may have heard, we have had a great time of prayer for our church. This marks the first day of our seven days of prayer. Each day throughout this week, we will be uploading a video to our Instagram and Facebook covering a different topic of prayer. We encourage you to tune in and pray with us as a church for our community. This week, we want to wish a happy birthday to Hosea, Gemma, Anna, Liana, Kathleen, and Emerson, Caleb, Litiana, and Russell. We hope you guys have a great week. As we come into this time of giving, I wanted to pose this question to you. What motivates you to give? Is it because you feel obligated to? Is it out of a sense of religious duty? I want to tell you, more than anything else, God wants our surrendered heart. God doesn't need our finances. God's love for you and me comes unconditionally and free. So when we give, we aren't giving to earn His love but rather we give out of a place of being loved by God. We are trusting in God and not ourselves to be our provider and our source of strength. We are sowing a seed of faith into the plans of God and our outward obedience in giving reflects our inward surrender. So as we give today, I encourage you to examine your heart, release yourself from the pressure to give out of obligation and instead choose to give cheerfully in faith and obedience, believing and trusting that Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are such a, a gracious and generous God. Father, as we give today, Lord, we surrender the throne of our heart afresh, Father, believing that you are our supply, Lord, that you are our strength, Father, and that we can put our whole heart and trust into your hands, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Anthony, and good morning, church, and thanks again for tuning in today. This morning's message is called Meet Me at Shechem, 
Would you meet me at Shechem? And uh, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Joshua chapter 24 as we talk about this place called Shechem today. Just as you're turning your Bibles there, I want to add an exclamation mark to the call to prayer. Our nation needs us to pray right at this point. I, as a team, we were talking uh, and we just felt we need to call the church to prayer. There are so many things going on in our land and we need to release the grace and the peace of God into our nation. Amen. No matter what your political sort of view of everything that is going on is, uh, we can pray and we can pray that God's kingdom is released into this land. I see such a short supply of grace in this nation. People judge one another, criticize one another. Uh, and, you know, I just this week as I was reflecting on why God had me talk about grace, it's because he wants his people to show grace. Grace is God leaning toward us. And we are to be a people that lean towards one another and show grace and love to people rather than judgment and criticism and, and peace. There's such a short supply of peace in this nation. Would you join with me in uh, seeking to be someone who releases peace to people and not trouble to them? Amen. No matter what our view is on all of the things that are going on, let's, let's try to be life-giving. Let's try to be people who release peace and grace to others. And uh, let's try to walk in that. And one of the ways we can do that is through praying. And so this week, we're going to, every day, we're going to, someone, one of the teams going to be praying. And uh, we want to just invite you to join with us in prayer. You can go on Facebook or Instagram and just watch the prayer and just say an amen and then just pray with your family there. And let's pray for this nation. We are, we are first and foremost, I'm not a citizen of New Zealand. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I, I come from a holy nation. Amen. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we, are, we have been adopted into that holy nation. We're part of the kingdom of heaven. But we've been placed here in this nation, in New Zealand, to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God and to release the kingdom of heaven into this land. So why don't we pray for this land that God has put us in, that his kingdom, his peace and his life would flow into people's lives. Would you join with us this week as we do that? That would be so good. I also want to just say Equip A uh, is starting tonight, 6 o'clock. I will be down at the cafe here at church. And I'm just uh, excited to share with anybody who's keen to learn how to grow in their relationship with God, how to learn how to hear God's voice, how to uh, know God and walk in the victory and power that He has for your life. So if you've never done that course and uh, you, you want to just, figure out how to have a better relationship with the Lord, I invite you to come down. It's free, six o'clock tonight. Come on down and join with us. That would be fantastic. So meet me at Shechem, Joshua chapter 24. This is where the Lord led me as I was praying this week. You know, I've, I've sometimes wondered what I would say in my last speech, my last sermon, maybe to the church or my last speech to my children, what would I tell them? Uh, be nice to your mother, maybe, if I was talking to my kids. Look after each other, maybe. What would you say if it was your, it was your last speech that you got to say to a, a group of people? Well, in this passage here, Joshua has come to the end of his leadership. He's led the people into the promised land. They've, they've possessed the land. They're, you know, he's led, been their leader for a while. And now this is his last speech. This is his last chance to call all the people together and to say something to them. It's, it's a profound moment. It's an important moment. And he is wanting to speak to this brand new nation, this group of people. He's wanting to say something that would help them as they journey forward as a group of people together. And I th think about the pandemic and everything that we have uh, experienced as a nation, as the world really, um, it's definitely shown up some frailties, uh, tested us and stirred us and shaken us in so many different ways, hasn't it? Uh, you know, even just in how we do church and how we relate to one another and there's been so much testing and pulling. I wonder if the words that Joshua is speaking to this nation might help us 
as we think about how do we move forward? How do we move forward as the people of God? How do we live and how do we operate? What's really important to Joshua now who's, you know, an, an old man, probably in his 80s somewhere, and he's giving this, this uh, command. He's, he's speaking to the people of God. Maybe there's something here that we could learn from. So let's pick it up in uh, verse 1. And I just want to read uh, a chunk of this chapter because it's, it's important to get the context of everything that he says. So verse 1 says, Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Did you notice where it was? At Shechem. And Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him through out Canaan and gave him many descendants. So God said, I called Abraham. He was a pagan, somebody who worshipped idols, and I brought him to this land of Canaan. If you read Genesis 12, you would know that the first place, one of the places that Abraham came and, and he set up a, an altar to the Lord was right here at this place in Shechem. It was a place when he came to the promised land that he had an encounter, he had a vision with God, and he set an altar up to worship the Lord. And so Joshua is reminding the people of the story of what's happened here at this very place that they are standing at right at this day. And then he goes on, he said, And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there. I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and He put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what it did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. He's reminding them of the faithfulness of how God has helped them through all of these things. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived in the east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you and took, and you took possession of their land. And then Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel. And he sent for Balaam. Remember the guy on the donkey? Uh, and uh, to put a curse on you, but I would not listen to Balaam. And so he blessed you instead of cursing you. And, you know, again, God delivered you out of his hands. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho, and we know that story, fought against you, as did all the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and Jebusites, and all the ites. And I gave them into your hands. So down to verse 13. So I gave you a land in which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and You live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And Joshua is just saying here, this is all the faithfulness of God to you. Verse 14. Now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Verse 15. This was that famous verse that, you know, we, we know we read so often. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people said, yes. They said, we want to serve God. And Joshua challenges them on that. He says, are you sure? And they set up a memorial there. And um, verse 23 says, Joshua said, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people there at Shechem. He reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. He set up a stone to mark the occasion that would be a witness between them and God. So it's a powerful day. All of the people came, the leaders, and they dedicated their hearts to the Lord and said, we're not going to serve idols. We're not going to worship the false gods. We are going to serve Yahweh, the Lord. Let's pray as we look at this story this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here 
into this place. Wherever we are listening to this message, God, in gatherings, at home, wherever we are, Lord, come and speak to our hearts today. Come and help us to walk forward, Lord, individually, as families, as a people, in this nation, O oh God, in a way that would honor you and bring glory to your name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shechem. Shechem. Shechem is a place uh, between two mountains. You've got Mount Gerizim on one side and Mount Ebal on the other side. And there's a valley between these two mountains. And we read here of Joshua getting the people together in this place. And it, it has a rich history in the Bible. Like I said, it's the first place that Abraham, when he came to the promised land, built an altar and worshipped God. And we'll see this theme of worship and of coming out of the gods of your ancestors and of placing the Almighty as priority and central in your hearts all the way through the Bible. I was teaching the interns this week about the law of first mention, the first time something's mentioned. And Genesis 12 is where Shechem is first mentioned. And we see this theme work its way through the scriptures. Jacob was Abraham's grandson and he ran away because Esau was pursuing him. He gets married, he comes back. And when he comes back, he, one of the first places he comes back from across the other side of the Euphrates is to Shechem after he's met with Esau. And it says he settled there and there he took all of the idols that had been bought from that place and buried them under an oak tree. There he said, you know what, we're not going to live our lives worshipping these idols. We're going to worship the Lord. And so Moses, when he was telling the people to possess the land, he said, when you get to that land, I want you to six tribes to stand on one mountain and six tribes to stand on the other. And you are to read aloud the, the blessings and the cursings uh, that are associated with walking with the Lord. And it's a famous chapter in Deuteronomy 28 around there where the people declared the blessings and declared the cursings. And so that had all happened at Shechem. So there's so much that happens in this place. And here we come to this point here where Joshua, at the end of his days, wanting to do one final act to encourage the people to walk forward into life and joy and peace brings them together. And I don't know if you noticed, but he, this, this thing that comes up often in the story is the idols. The idols from here and the idols from here. Let's put all that away and let's serve the Lord. So I had a look at some of these idols. There's, there's three types of idols here that Joshua says to the people, I want you to put these things away. So the first one is the idols beyond the Euphrates. The, the idols that were where Abraham grew up. The idols over there were associated with paganism and superstition. And I think there's a lesson there for us. These gods that represented pantheism and confusion in our lives. Sometimes we, we come from a, a family story. People I know and I've ministered to that have had family idols, uh, superstitions, and our cultures and in our, our beliefs and our upbringing. Abraham was called out of that. And as he crossed over the Euphrates, he walked away from the other side of all of that uh, superstition and fear and came into a place where he put those idols away. It might be a challenge for you maybe in your life. Is there idols that you have around the home? I know I've ministered to families in our church that have that are following Jesus, but they've got these, these lucky charms. They've got these idols, these things that the demonic has a power through to terrorize them and to torment them. And Jesus wants to set you free from that. And, and it's time to put those things away. If you have those things in your home, if you have those idols, those little things that are there. I mean, these things sort of try to creep into our hearts and our minds. I don't know if you've, uh, you see some of the movies, that, uh, the kids' movies even. They have family idols, lucky charms, ancestral worship, your lucky ancestor that helps you through all these sort of things. 
Uh, and God wants us to put away those kind of things. We're to put away those idols and believing in these superstitions and charms and stuff like that. Put our trust in the Lord. So those idols from beyond the Euphrates, if you have them in your home, if you know that those little things are there, that you're, you, sometimes we're even afraid that we'll get in trouble if we put those things away. Have some, get some prayer, have courage, and put those things away. Joshua calls the people, don't worship those idols. Then he says here that one of the other sets of idols is the, the idols of Egypt. The idols of Egypt. These are the idols that enslave men to sin and addictions and bondage. Obviously, we, we think about in our culture today, drugs and alcohol, greed, uh, lust, um, all sorts of things that enslave people to some kind of habit and keep them oppressed and keep them from living a life that glorifies God. If you think about the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, when they built the golden calf, they began to rebuild an idol like they had seen in Egypt. All of a sudden, once they built this golden calf, they began to act out the, the acts of Egypt. They began to act out all sorts of immorality and greed and everything else and just, just fell into sin. You know, you become like what you worship. If you worship a beast, you will become a beast. You will begin to live. Men who worship the beast will live like beasts, will, will treat other people terribly. In the end, we are told in the Word of God that there will arise the beast and his number will be 666, which is the number of the day that the beast was created on. It's the, it's the ultimate manifestation that will come in the earth of that which is, is beastly and sinful and it involves control and manipulation and all of that. But we are to be the people of God who walk in love and who walk in power and who walk in anointing and authority, not in that kind of enslaved, manipulated mindset. And if today you are struggling with that idol, you're struggling with an addiction, you're struggling with one of those things in your life, friend, get prayer today, get free from that today and put away that idol, put that thing away and come out from that and come into the freedom that Christ has for you. The third set of idols here is the, the idols Joshua mentions of the Amorites. The Amorites were the people in whose land they were dwelling. It was the current culture of the day. It was the idols of, of hedonism and consumerism and pleasure. The, the Amorites, idolatry, seduced people into all sorts of acts of sin that, that was, was connected with this and, and just, you know, a, a love for self, 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 pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I see that so much. Don't you see that so much in our culture today? And Joshua challenged his generation to put those idols away and to worship the Lord, to serve God wholeheartedly. Choose you this day, he says, whom you will serve. Whether the God's from the Euphrates, the Amorites, or the Egyptians. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I wonder whether we have domestic deities, uh, household gods that we look to for our happiness, our security, our self-justification, things that we put our trust in. Is there something that I long for in my heart, something you long for in your heart, that you clamor for and that, you know, if I don't have that, I'm just going to die. Like it's, it's so important to you. Something that gives me meaning and happiness in life. Maybe a person, maybe an object, maybe something, an activity. I don't know what it is that just satisfies your soul. Is that thing becoming an idol? Does that thing need to be put away from your life? What is it that enables you to lie down at night and know in your core that I'm okay, I'm, I'm good right down here. If the answer to that is anything but God Himself, then friend, that thing is functioning as a God to you. Idols aren't just stone statues. They are the loves, the thoughts, the desires, the expectations and the longings of our heart, the things that we so long for. Anything that takes the place of the one true God needs to be put away from our lives. Joshua is speaking to this young nation here as he 
looks forward to their future, says this thing, this, this is what he talks about. Of all the things he could have said in his final speech, he says, put away your idols. Those things will destroy you. Those things will wreck your future and worship the Lord. Keep him number one in your hearts and in your minds. But note how he approaches this. Note how he says that it should be done. He begins with this phrase, as for me. As for me. It begins with me. It starts here. You see, it's not about what the majority thinks or the minority thinks. It starts with me. It starts with me doing what is right. When I stand before God one day and try to use the excuse, but everyone else was doing it, that argument's not going to cut it. You're not going to convince God that it's okay because everyone else was doing it. As for me, what has God spoken to you? Have you fully in your heart decided to follow the Lord? It's not about what the pastor said or your parents, how your parents raised you. It's about you. Have you chosen to follow the Lord wholeheartedly? As for me, I will serve the Lord. It's a choice you must make. It's a choice you must make not to follow the false gods of the world and pursue the, the false gods of the culture around you, but to live a life that honors God completely. No more idols. Now, often we spend too much time, I think, thinking about other people. Well, I hope Jimmy's listening to this message and I, I hope that guy over there, you know, Pastor Tim, and I hope Sonia's listening to this word because, you know, there's, there's issues in their life. We, we spend a whole lot of time thinking about the other person, but Joshua sort of focuses the spotlight right on himself and says, as for me, it begins with me. It's stop worrying about the person on your left or your right or over there or over here and bring it back here into our lives. As for me, I have a choice to make. And then the next phase of that is my house. As for me and my house. Each of us has a realm of authority, whether that's the leader in your home, whether that is the leader in a church or a leader in a ministry, a leader at a place at work or just your own personal space. Each of us at different phases of life has a realm of authority. And Joshua says here, as for me and my house, my home, the place that God has given me to be the leader in, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. You and I get to set the atmosphere in our homes. We get to set the atmosphere in our realm of authority. You choose what apps are on your phone. You choose what music is played. You choose what movies you watch. You choose uh, what things you read. You get to choose what happens in that realm of authority, whether it's going to be a place of idol worship and idolatry and false gods, or whether it is going to be a place where the Lord Jesus is honored and lifted up. You determine that as for me and my house. Joshua understands to this nation that he is talking to. Listen, it's a nation, this nation, that this nation will be built on strong families and strong families will be built on strong individuals who have decided that for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we will put away all of the idols. So the call is for us, for me and my house, before we try and sort out our nation, let's sort out me and let's sort out our homes and let's live a life that gives glory to God in that space. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, we will serve the Lord. We will put away all that the world is trying to lure us with and everything that's trying to come at us from here and we will serve God. We will honor God. We will worship God. We will fulfill the purposes of God in our lives, in our generation. You know what? I would love the families of Manukau New Life to be families that are known for worshiping the Lord wholeheartedly. The people, the individuals in our church. I'd love it if we are just known as people who put away everything that is false, every idol, every, 
every other thing and say, you know what? I just love God so much. I, I worship Him and I'm living my life for Him. That is the kind of people that Joshua was trying to inspire on this day. He says, come on, let's be nation, a nation full of families that love God and give our lives and everything to Him. Everything we have. See, the people in Joshua's day, they, they, they did love the Lord. But they had this mindset that said, well, we do love God. He saved us. But we kind of, we don't mind having another God over here for fertility and another God over here for the harvest and another God over there for a bit of a good time. And so they kind of partition their lives into different sections. And well, on this day, I come and worship Yahweh. But on other days, I'll go and give something to that God and something to that God to keep them all happy and to make sure I have a good life. Joshua is saying here, put away all those other gods and worship the Lord. I think that, you know, we can do that too. We can do that. We can say, well, I, uh, uh, on Sunday, I'll worship the Lord. But on these other days, I'll kind of follow after a bit of greed and follow after a bit of that God and do a bit of this over here. And we end up with all these gods in our lives. Let's put those things away and let's live our life only for the Lord. Listening in that day was a young man, Othniel. And as I prayed about this, I felt his name came up. Um, and the Lord began to talk to me about a generation of Othniels who were going to be released in this place. Othniel listened and decided to put those idols away, to fully trust in the Lord. Many on that day simply gave lip service, just Said yes, yes, but didn't put their idols away. But he was one of those who did. Caleb, Joshua's friend, had a beautiful daughter and he needed to find the right man for her to be her husband. I think I've talked about this before, but he set up a challenge that any young man who could clear this mountain of angry giants could marry his daughter. And uh, Othniel was up for the challenge, stepped up and he defeated those, those giants and won Caleb's uh, daughter's hand in marriage. He demonstrated courage, skill and leadership. Actually, Othniel's name, I looked it up this week, it means Lion of God, Strength of God. He was a Lion of the Lord. Man, I, I believe God wants to raise up some lions of God. Amen. Well, a, a few years later, after Joshua and Caleb had passed away, we read a little bit about uh, him in Judges chapter 3. The people, verse 7, I'm reading here, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God, didn't take them long, and served the Baals and their Ashereths. So they forgot to worship God and they started turning to all of the idols that were around them. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Aram Naharaim, to whom the Israelites were subject for eight years. But then they cried out to the Lord. They remembered the Lord. It's, it's so the thing, isn't it? We cry out to God when we're in trouble and we forget him when, we're, when things are going well. But they cried out to the Lord. He raised up for them a deliverer, Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother who saved them. The Spirit of the Lord came on him so that he became Israel's judge and went to war. The Lord gave Cushem Rithaim, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel who overpowered him. So the land had peace for 40 years until Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. So this young man, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and the, the people had forgotten God and turn to the idols, turn to all the other things around them, got themselves in trouble. They cry out to the Lord. But Othniel had listened to the advice and had put the idols away. And the Spirit of God's looking for young men, for young women, for a generation, no matter if you're old or you're young, wherever you are, who would put the idols away, who would put the things of the world away and the false gods and who would seek the Lord and would live their lives. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God's looking for that generation, that people. 
And I believe He's calling some of you into that space to have courage, to have skill, to have leadership and to show strength and to go to war. He went to war to deliver His people. The best place you and I can go to war is in the prayer room. Get into the realm of the Spirit and begin to pray. Begin to pray and begin to declare freedom over our nation. Go to war in the things of the Spirit. Let that lion awaken within you. I love that uh, Brandon Lake song called Gratitude. I think it is. I listen to it all the time. It's a, it's a new one. It says, uh, the, the lyrics go, Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your head. You've got a lion inside of you. Get up and praise the Lord. It's an awesome song. If you haven't heard it, get it on Spotify or something. Have a listen to it. There's sometimes you just have to tell your soul when it's feeling flat, when it's feeling down, get up and praise the Lord. You've got a lion inside of you. You've got this roar on the inside of you today. Come on, young man. Come on, young woman. Come on, older man, older woman. Come on. It's time. The mature, the Joshua's, the Caleb's, the Othniel's. It's time that we stood up and went to war. We began to praise our God, began to declare the kingdom of God coming into our nation and our land. Let the lions arise. Ha, oh, come on. You know, someone else who had a, a God encounter moment right there near Shechem. The New Testament name for Shechem was Sikar. And in John chapter 4, well, there was, at Shechem was where Jacob's well was and where Joseph's bones were buried. Lots of other things happened in that place, but. John chapter 4, now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Right there, Shechem. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? <laughs> and she said, how, how come you're talking to me as Samaritan? How come you're crossing cultural lines, spending time with me? I, I, am I not unclean to you? Am I not somebody that people say you shouldn't be with right now? And he says to her, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask and I'd give you living water. Living water. Conversation goes on and he begins to speak to her about her lifestyle about some bondage that she has in her lifestyle, the immorality. She says, I perceive that you are a prophet. And the conversation turns to worship right here in this place. This woman coming to draw water from the well is about to have an encounter with the living God and is about to hear about worship, about to hear about how to get rid of some of the idols in her life. She says, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, this one over here. I don't know which one of the two it was. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. We can make an idol out of our worship. You know, oh, it's got to be like this. It's got to be like that. I mean, hasn't that been so challenged in our lives, right? We, we can't do church the same way we used to and kind of learning how to encounter God. And, and Jesus says this famous line to her, verse 23, Yet a time is coming and now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father is seeking. God is spirit, and His worshippers must worship Him in spirit and in truth. In other words, it's not about this form that you have thought it's about. It's not about looking like this or looking like that. It's about a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. It's about truth, receiving truth from God and worshipping Him. Right here where Abraham worshipped God. Right here where Jacob put his idols down and worshipped the Lord. Right here where Joshua is telling the people, put away your idols and serve the Lord. Right here Jesus is speaking to this woman at the well and bringing her out of idolatry and out of bondage to sin and calling her to worship the Lord. Right here at Shechem. We're going to sing this song, Jaira, again, just the chorus. But instead of singing, I just want you to maybe sit quietly 
Maybe lift your hands up and I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to each of our hearts today. Is there an idol? Is there something that you have placed on the throne of your heart? Something that the Holy Spirit might point out to you that needs to be put away. God needs to take that place in your life today. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. Come and speak to each one of us today. Come and speak to our hearts. Show us if there's something that we are putting our trust in rather than in you, Lord. Speak to our lives as we sing this. everything we need. Oh. If you know something is stirring in your heart this morning, because you know there's something that's not in its right place, maybe an idol, a thought, a person, something we've talked about is in the wrong place in your life today. Why don't you just pray this along with me here as we close this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry for allowing this false God, this idol, to take the place in my heart that only you can fill. Right now, I put that away and I put my trust in you. I choose as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. Do join with us each day as we pray um, for this nation this week. We would invite you to do that and just pray whenever you can there with your family as well. Have a fantastic day. Take care.